Hi y'all, it's Sarah from Adding It All Up. Yes, I'm a cash budgeter and I haven't been on here in about two weeks and I wanted to let you guys know why. I'm currently driving um, from a client to back to my office and so I figure I would not really paying attention to the phone, I'm actually paying attention more to the road. Um, I really quick wanted to just come on and talk to you guys about why I haven't been on in the last two weeks. Okay, here it goes. True confession time. So I started my YouTube channel to help people, to help them budget, to help them figure out exactly, you know, kind of what they wanted to do. Um, I'm crushing debt still. I've been off the horse for about two weeks right now um, on my crushing debt journey uh, just because I had to take a pause and focus on my business. Um, there's been some things that have happened in my business that I am stretching and growing. It is opportunity, it was what I keep calling it, is opportunity, um, that you will find as a small business entrepreneur that sometimes life happens and you just have to kind of go with the punches. I was not able to keep up with my YouTube channel as far as like being consistent that is my, that's my fault, and I'm sorry for that. Um, but what I'm not apologetic for is to take care of my business that I currently run and my people that are underneath of me. Um, I currently have about 25 people that are dependent upon me and my business partner for their jobs and well-being. I do take that responsibility very seriously. Um, <clears throat> and as I should, because I am the employer. So, that being said, <laughs> I just wanted to pop on and just apologize to you guys. I am going to come back on with some more content. Uh, I am going to finish up my different budget life journeys, uh, you know, that April started. And I am going to finish that series out because I think it's very important that everyone understand, like, why budgeting is important and why we do it. Um, but I just wanted to give you guys the truth and the honesty um, so, so really truthfully, honestly, being an entrepreneur is not easy. It is not for the faint of heart. Um, I tell people, if you think that this, if you think of being an employee is hard, you ain't seen nothing yet. Hold on to your pants. Um, it's very rewarding. It's very life changing, but I also tell people you will work harder at this than you will ever work hard at anything else. Um, if you are not up for that challenge, this is not for you. You should not be an entrepreneur, be an employee, make somebody else some money. Because honestly, at 5 o'clock when you go home, you can't shut off. It's hard. Um, and people will tell me, well, you don't have boundaries. You don't have that. Well, I do have boundaries. And there are certain things that I refuse to you know, do. Uh, family is always first. But for my employees, families is always first too. So if one of my employees has somebody in their family that's going through a rough time and they need to be at home with them or their kids are sick or, you know, God heaven forbid something happens and they can't be, you know, they can't be where they need to be because they have a job to do, I chip in because that's what we do. We're a small employer. We are not a large Fortune 500 company. Um, my employees have a lot of flex time. You know, as long as the work is getting done, I do not care. Um, I am more about productivity and more about making sure that the work gets done than I am about whether or not you punch a clock eight to five. Um, punching a clock, everybody can do that. Everyone can punch a clock. But actually doing your work, that's something totally different. Um, that can be done at night, it can be done in the morning, before you go to work, or before your kids go off to school, that can be done in the afternoon. There's just a lot of times that I just like to tell people it's it's really not it's not worth it. You know, your family's only around for so long. Kids grow up, 18 years you got them, and then they're out the door. Some of us are more lucky than others that at 18 years they're out the door. Some of us have them hanging around like a bad habit. Um, not that I would mind that those they're all wonderful, but. Uh, yeah, it's hard. It's not easy. So 
I mean, I'm at my regular quote unquote job, um, which is my business, you know, in the morning from about seven until six o'clock at night, I go home and then I work on my YouTube channel at night. So, you know, I'm an empty nester, yes. I don't have my kid around anymore. She's grown. I feel like I succeeded. She actually can still sustain herself and support herself outside of my family, um, which is what we all want from all our kids, right? So that in and of itself, I gotta make a right here, um, is a good thing. So that is good. So I feel like I have won. But if you um, think that being an entrepreneur is you get to make your own hours? You kind of don't. Um, do, you, do you think that being an entrepreneur means that you get more free time? Not really. Um, it, do I enjoy what I do? Absolutely. Um, do I think that I have to be on 24-7? No. But I also know that the glamorization of entrepreneurship over the last 10 years that I have seen, um, to me, is just not realistic. Um, even Gary B, like, he's like, you gotta embrace the suck, man. Uh, it is definitely a cycle when you are embracing something that isn't necessarily what you think it's going to be. Um, I've owned several businesses now. I can't see myself doing anything else but that. I don't play well with in the employee field because I'm always outspoken and always looking for things that will make us more productive. So I, I truly am not that way. Uh, so unfortunately, I am I am not a typical employee. Um, and I hire not a typical employees because of that. Because uh, I see their worth. Um, I know that they, you know, want to be business owners or business, you know, business minded. But it's okay. If, if you want to be, I call them ABC players. If you want to be a B player and you want to be that person that crunches numbers and, you know, turns out stuff and we need people in that process. You can be an amazing B player. Um, I don't mean B by like your greatest B. I mean like you are the B player. You're the one that gets stuff done in the office. Those people are as much as important as the person that's out there, uh, what I call an A player and is out there selling. So just cause you're a salesperson and you're selling doesn't mean that you can, I tell people you can sell you can sell apple pie all day long, but if no one buys them and you can't get them produced, you didn't sell them nothing. So yeah, I could sell a hundred thousand apple pies, but if I ain't got no one to make them, what did I sell? Nothing, I didn't sell anything. So the product is just as important as the person producing the product. Does that make sense? Um, so we all work together in our office as a team there is no I in team, people. That does not mean that it is me. I am the first one up and the last to go. Um, being, being an owner is... Patrick Lencioni actually has a great book called The Servant Leader. I think it was Patrick Lencioni. Or it's Simon Sinek. One of the two. Um, but I, bo I like both of them. Um, so if you have never read those books, I would highly recommend that you read those books. Um, but in order to be a leader... It does not mean that you eat first, you eat last. And so if you are not wanting to do that as an entrepreneur and eat crow and eat last and let your people eat first, then you should never get into this business. You should never be in it. You probably should be what I call a solopreneur. And at that point, you really are creating yourself a job. So, there is leadership skills involved in that, but it is you created a job for yourself. So that in and of itself is you're still a job. Um, being a leader means that other people do the work and you lead them to the next thing. So I still am working in my business and on my business, um, but I know it's gonna take some time. It's just gonna take time. And 
that's all that's all we can hope for right like that's all we can hope to do is that at the end of the day I guys if I've had a successful day it doesn't mean that I didn't have any complaints it means that all my people got paid they all maybe had a great day or not a great day but I always joke like tomorrow we slay the dragon again um, you know we get up in the morning and we go out and we hunt and we slay it and we come back so whether or not a good day to me is that everything that I thought should be accomplished got done which by the way never happens um, but my one thing in the day that I was focusing on if that got done then I'm happy honestly because there's a hundred different things that can happen um, when you own different businesses, it's hard sometimes if they're not self-sufficient. That is one thing I will, do you guys like these roundabouts they put in? Just side note, roundabouts, like what the heck? We're not Europe anyway, <laughs> but actually they work out really good. Um, but anyway, that's a side note, but honestly, and I can't remember what I was saying. Anyway, it must not have been important. No, it was important. Um, but I'm just going to tell you out there, go out there. If it's a good day, it's a good day. You make it what you want to make it. So if you decide that today is going to be a great day, it's going to be a great day. If you decide today is going to be a crappy day, it's going to be a crappy day. So most of my good days are, we got paid, my people got paid, we created destiny, and we created legacy honestly that is what we did so if you guys want to hang around for some more content on entrepreneurship um cash budgeting and also small business uh because i know everyone's freaked out about the rates here coming up so feds are raising the rates um so if you're interested in all that leave me a heart down at the bottom but i will talk to you guys soon I promise I will be on here more often. Just, I had to take a break and focus on my business. So I will talk to you guys later. Bye.